Today we're talking about the spline panel infusion. This is a very important tool if you want to animate things in Resolve. By the way, if you want to learn how to make some motion graphics, we have a course for that right here. Make sure to check that out after the video. Here I am in Fusion and I have this little animation where there's some text that drops in and I'm talking like this for some reason. Drop in text, but there's a problem. This text, when it drops in, it just stops immediately. Look at this. Look at this animation just sucking. Stops all willy nilly like, you know those kids in the hall when you were in high school that would just stop in the middle of the hall and you're like, dude, I'm walking. What are you, what is that? It's doing that. Well, we want this to slow down before it stops, which is a process in animation called easing. The easiest way to, <laughs> the easiest way to ease in Fusion is with the spline panel. So up here where our little panel buttons are, if we click on spline, it will open up the spline panel down here. What this is, is a graph of anything that's animated. In order to actually see anything, we have to check the box. So I'm gonna check this displacement box, which is what they call moving things around for some reason. And now we have this pink line. Now, I don't know why, but for some reason, it always just puts the line kind of willy nilly wherever it wants. So to get it to make any sense at all, you have to click on this button right here, which is the zoom to fit button. When you click on that, it becomes a graph that you can actually see. From here, we can get really detailed with how we mess with our animation. I'm just gonna make this real big and zoom into our text a little bit here. There we go, there's a nice thing. So this graph is in between two keyframes, this first keyframe and this last keyframe. If we select a keyframe, you'll notice this little green line. You can take the end of this line and move it around and it, look at this, it's a little handle that will control how this animates in between those keyframes. So if I push this last keyframe tangent down like this, this is gonna slowly drop in and then it's gonna really quickly just snap into place. So here we go like this, and it just slowly, slowly kind of drops in and then snaps into place. In fact, that's a little bit hard to see. So let's take this last keyframe and move it down. The way that you can do that is just grab it and move it back and forth. I'll zoom out just a little bit with this little slider here. Let's make this last a little bit longer. I can click and drag on my scroll wheel here, my middle button to kind of pan this around. And yeah, let's look at this animation here. So as we go, whoosh, kind of snaps in like that. So that's not really what we want. What we actually want this to do is slow down as it approaches this keyframe. So I can take this tangent and I can push it like this. So it's almost flat. And now you can kind of think of this as if you're driving a truck up a hill, which hill do you want to drive up? Do you want to drive up this one and then bottom out and get stuck there forever? Or do you want something nice and smooth like that? I always say, if you want to drive a truck up an animation curve, then that's a, that's a good curve. I've never said that, but look, it, look at how nice that is. Ooh, baby, so good. See, that's what I'm talking about. So we have a lot of control over how this animates, even though we haven't set a whole bunch of keyframes. I can also select this first keyframe and adjust how that works and kind of how it interpolates in between these. So I can have this start really slow and then drop in. I can have it go crazy fast at the beginning and then slow down a lot. Just a lot of control here, it's really great. Now, these keyframes you'll notice are like these little lock icons. That means that you can't change their value, you can only change their time, which is really nice. If I do want to adjust this value, I have to go to our transform and go to the keyframe in the inspector and actually adjust it there. But in the spline panel, you can adjust the timing and you can adjust kind of how these interpolate. Now, you can also add extra little keyframes in between. So let's take this and we'll just make this about how it was. And let's say we want this to kind of drop into place and bounce a little bit. Well, we can just grab this line and kind of bend it up like this and flatten out this curve a little bit. A little shortcut for flattening things out is if you select the keyframe and you hit F on the keyboard, that's gonna flatten out that curve. Same thing for these, flatten that out. And so now we have this kind of bouncing in like that, boing. I can make this bounce more by adding more curves here. Select all these and hit F on the keyboard. I can also hit S to smooth it and it'll kind of smooth in between the two frames. So now we have this coming down and it bounces a little bit. Then you can kind of adjust the timing and the values to look more natural. Quite a bit of control here in the spline panel. One other thing I want to show is if you select a bunch of keyframes like this, you have a bunch of different options down here. Most of these are for things like smoothing them out or flattening them or whatever. But one that I use a lot is Shapebox. 
You select that, that kind of makes this little selection box around things, and you can scale these to keep that same general curve, but make it shorter or longer. So now we have this whole thing happening over 90 frames or a lot faster, like over 20 frames. Pretty nice way to work. So if you haven't opened the spline panel, definitely recommend doing that. Makes your animations nice and smooth. Again, if you want to learn more about animating things and doing motion graphics inside of Fusion, we have a course right here that you can click on. Check it out. See if it's something you might be interested in. You never know. Hey, you never know. It's not something you'd ever know. <laughs> I don't know. But hey, Thanks for watching to the end of this video. Would you tell me one thing? If you could pet any dog right now, what kind of dog would you pet?